Um, ladies and gentlemen, tonight is a special class. It's a special class because we are uh, 24 hours less than 24 hours before Yom Kippurim. It's also a special class because we made it special for a special human being, God gave to the world, a human being that left this world um, and gave us two of the greatest gifts that our community have, Dr. Daniel and Michael. Um, their father, Rahmat Kuna, Hanukkah ben Michael, Ruach Hashem, Tenchanu Megan Eden, Tien, Ishmato, Tzorah, Tzorah Chaim, and their mother, Tibadel Chaim, Tovim Varukim, the Gmar Hatima Tova, Shana Tova, Mrs. Tsipora, Bezrat Hashem, that always flying all over. Every good news, Bezrat Hashem. And you're going to fly all over only for good news, Bezrat Hashem. Rabbi Rabotai, this is a, a moment of truth. Today, I'm going to try, because many of you came here from a different community, so I will try to give you some advice and tips uh, regarding to each tefillah that we pray in. Each tefillah, something that we can take in, and you're going to have in mind when you're passing in Yom Kippurim. So obvious, the first one is Kal Nidre. Just a reminder, tomorrow morning, even tonight, by the way, tonight is very important to go to do, Kaparot. Kaparot. We're doing kaparot with chicken. Why do we do kaparot with chicken? I mean, they have tradition right now to do it with money. The original way is to do it with, kitchen, with chicken. There's two main reasons why we do it with chicken. The first one is, with money you cannot do what I'm telling you right now. A person has to pass through arba'a mitot bedin. God forbid, certain avarot that we do, the punishment is Serafa, meaning you're born to death. They burn you up. A person have to have sekila, meaning stone to death. A person have to do for certain, the uh, ariga, ariga meaning they kill you. Like shechita. Serafa, sekila, herik vechenek. Or choking. And Nathan and Daniel, all of them is passing with the chicken. When you're going right now to the Gruzinian synagogues, 63 in the wood oven and the court they have right now maybe two to five hundred or maybe one thousand chicken for weddings you're going to see when shochet is going to take the chicken the first thing she's going to do is chenek chenek meaning is holding the chicken like this preparing How, what exactly he's doing he's choking the chicken then he's doing a guys with a knife he killed the chicken and then he's throwing the chicken to the box and purposes to it. Why? Secular. Stone. And then when you take in the sand and you cover the blood, blood is fire. So we have the four punishment. So what do you do in this moment is you said, the Almighty God, if God forbid because of my sin, I was supposed to be choked. I was supposed to be killed. I was supposed to be dying. I was supposed to be stoned to death. Let the animal pay for it, and I will go to long and healthy life. Do you understand why chicken is important? Because the chicken take away from the full pun full punishment that a human being is supposed to have. Now we understand why do we do in the chicken? This is going to be instead of me. But the question is, okay, so we explain why chicken. But the question is, why chicken have to do what I'm supposed to? What is the blame of the chicken that I made the avarot? Why he have to pay the price? Good question, right? Okay, we understand that what we're doing with the chicken, simple explanation I will tell you, if this chicken came to the world just to save one Jew from being dead, it was worldly. <laughs> you understand? When you eat chicken, you know, all these animal rights and all these animal activate, the one that's going against eating meat and against, you know, the first one that was the animal right was the German that killed 6 million Jews and killed over 20 million people in general. And their animal rights, the first animal rights was the German, by the way, just to let you know, one of the beginning. I'm not saying God forbid to be cruel to animals. God forbid. 
צער בעלי חיים is something that indicates in the Torah. We have to be very sincere and sensitive. But why do we eat meat? Why do we eat? Everybody's talking about being sincere. And all of us have steaks on the, on the plates. And to get the steaks, you have to kill a cow. So why do we eat? Two reasons, Moreh Rabotai. One reason is because the animal elevates itself. When we're making beracha and we eat the meat, the meat become, become from being animals to become what? Human being. And not a regular human being, a Jew. And not a regular Jew, a Jew that doing beracha. The purpose of this meat, the purpose of this chicken, the same way I've deal when the Jews went into the Holocaust to die. What's the last word that they said? Shema Israel, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. We are the sacrifice of God. They felt so lucky doing so. They didn't feel that they're going, God forbid, to lose anything. To get the highest level possible. One explanation. So if by doing the animal you kill him and another Jew stay alive, the animal is dancing. When you know that this is, you know what the purpose is? To give another purpose to another person life. This is one explanation. But they have another explanation, Hasidut, according to the Kabbalah. How do we call when a person behave not right? Animal instinct. Right? Do you know what's the difference between animal and human being? What's your name again? Jason. Jason. Jason, what's the difference between animal and a human being? Um, they're walking and we're walking. They're talking, they have a relationship. They, they have a family members. They have children. Some of them even talking. So what's the difference? They, they really, they're meant to be eating. They're, they're meant to be? Eden? No, 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 but what's the difference between us and them? It's no different. You know what's the only different? They cannot control their behavior. You never saw animals go and diet. Go green. And from now, I eat only leathers. That's it. You never saw animals running into the treadmill. Why? Because she want to be. You never see animals that want to bark and stop. You know, this guy is good. I'm not going to bark. <laughs> Animal do not have a choice. When he wants something, he will get it. If the lion wants to eat someone, he's not going to say, you know what? I feel bad for him, merciful. I'm going to have a little mercy. No, he's going to eat him alive, and then he's going to think, how come I eat him? A human being have a choice. You know when a human being act like animals, you know what's the meaning? He cannot control his desires. Do you know why we kill the animals? To remind all of us, it was not us that did the sin. It was our, our animal part that did the sin. Do you understand how deep is that, Nathan? It's not you. You are a great human being. You are a good human being. You are a spirituality human being. But why do you did it? Because the animal part of you, they call it in Hebrew, nefesh be'emit, a soul that consider to be animals. So when you kill the animal, you remind yourself that the animal part of you overcome the spirituality part. Beautiful explanation. Let's continue. Tomorrow, Be'ezrat Hashem, it's good at least once to dip in the mikveh. It's almost obligation, guys. I'm talking only to the men. Woman doesn't have the to dip, except if she's married, except in that times, but a man, in general, many, many people, many students of mine, they go on every Friday to the mikveh. Some chassidim, Chabad, is going every day to the mikveh. The reason why right, that most of his level in spirituality he achieved because going into the mikveh. But in Erev Yom Kippur, everybody's going to the mikveh. You have to go to the mikveh. Now, tradition-wise, some people is going three times. Why three times? One, before Shacharit. One after Shacharit before Mincha, and one after Mincha. You decide when to go. But why three times? I was thinking today when I was driving here, why three times? They have three reasons why we go into the mikveh before Yom Kippurim. One of them, they call it Tvilat Ezra. Do you know what Tvilat Ezra? If a person went to sleep at night, and he wake up in the morning, 
and he saw something that came out from his body that is not pure. It used to be tradition that a person was obligated to go to the mikveh. You're going to purify it yourself from leftover, from uh, western seed. You know, this is what we call Tevilat Ezra. You're coming into the Torah and you're getting Aliyah, you have to be pure. You're going to the mikveh. Even though it happened coincidence, but this is what we call Tevilat Ezra. Ezra Sofer. Ezra is Ezra Sofer, one of the righteous rabbis in the world history. Okay? Second reason is, That the new Kippurim we all consider to be Kanvod. What's the first thing that you do with Kanvod? You send them to the Mikveh. He went to the Mikveh before he was a Goy. He came out, he was a Jew. All the sin that we did last year, all the things that we did, we want to come in, we are a new people. We just came back to the world. <laughs> what do you do? You go to the Mikveh. You go into the Mikveh naked like a baby, that was in the room of his mother. And you're coming outside, and now you feel like a brand new human being. This is the second reason. And number three is to get extra kedusha, extra holiness. Now that you're in the mikveh, like the reason right, all my level I got because of my mikveh. One of them is Tvilat Ezra, meaning to clear, clean our body from a certain sin. The second one is Tvila, like a goy that can vod, meaning we take away all the sin away and become new. And the last one is to uplift our level, to get more kedusha. When you deepen the mikveh, you get much more kedusha. So this is the three reasons, might be that this is the three reasons that they deep three times Erev Yom Kippurim. And other things I will tell you. You have to take a lot of money tomorrow, small money, big money, and give tzedakah. And make noise. Some they have tradition, Kafa Chaim, I read it, that you have to put it in a box and make the noise. <laughs> make sure there's going to be coins also to make a noise. Why? Tzedakah, that's in of it. Tzedakah is something that always, always, always helping every human being to be saved from any decree that is possible. So this is introduction and preparation to Yom Kippurim. Now let's dive into Yom Kippurim. The first tefillah is Kal Nidre. Kal Nidre is the most important tefillah. It's the interim the tefillah. The question is, what exactly is so important in Kal Nidre? Atarat Nadarim. Tomorrow morning we're going to do Atarat Nadarim. We did Atarat Nadarim before Shabbat. We did Atarat Nadarim Motzei Shabbat. We did Atarat Nadarim Last week, Motsi Shabbat. We did Rosh Hashanah. How many Atarat Nedarim? What is Atarat Nedarim in English? Release or erase the vow that we took upon ourselves. All the promises. All the things that we swear. And we said bad. And we didn't say with God help. We have to erase this Nedarim. The question is why is so important? Especially that the Filah before Yom Kippurim. I will tell you this one. Anyone that is going to buy you. The four Sefer Torah, a reason right, once in a lifetime, once in a lifetime, you have to buy this Sefer, the first one. If you want to ask me what's the best sin of the year, this one, the Sefer Torah of Karnitri. When I saw it in the reason, you know what I did? I went to the synagogue and I bought it, being a rabbi, I'm talking about 10 years ago, before I came here, it was 12 years ago, I bought it in my community, the Syrian community, they had a little mercy because when we got to five and a half thousand, I went all the way five and a half thousand. Then I don't know, maybe they felt bad, so they stopped bidding. I said, why you didn't feel bad? I did it before, you know? <laughs> why are you going to buy from? But the reason right that a person is supposed to spend all his money to buy this book. All the money that you have to spend to buy this book. You don't understand how important it is. No Nila, Karnidri. This book is the guarantee to erase all your sin, and especially Tikkun Abrit. Tikkun Abrit, especially. This book is unique. And Anyone that buys these books is the one that says Shechianu, guarantee for one year of life. Now, to buy it every week, every year, is going to be difficult. So, at le- because of that, there is a right, at least once in a lifetime. At least to erase the Tikkun Abrit. At least to erase that sin. All the sins, but this one. But the minute that you say Shechianu, you are the one that opens Shechianu, you get the guarantee for one year of life. Unread. 
Unreal, what a gift, what a gift. This is the gift of con the question is why? Why this, why, why this candidate is so important? I'm gonna give you today three simple explanations that I want you to have in mind. The first one is very simple. You know, they said, call it semi PBSF. You coming in to the Almighty God and said, God, you promised me last year that you're gonna give me a good year. You promised me that it's gonna be amazing years. You promised me that I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna get married, I'm gonna have children, shalom bait, and it didn't happen. I mean, when I left Yom Kippur, I knew that I was signed and sealed for a good years. How come it didn't happen? And God will respond to you that you kept all your promises. I mean that you don't keep your promises. God have no obligation to keep his promises. Hashem tzidcha al yadi minecha. God is our shadow. What is the shadow? Shadow, when I move the hand, what do you see in the glass? Hand is moving. When I'm smiling, somebody's smiling. God follow our directions. If you don't keep your promise, so the first things that we do when we come in Yom Kippur, please God, we erase all our sin. Everything that we ever promised, please, we take it away. Now that we come clean, everything that we're gonna take this year, we're gonna try either to say Berlin either, or either to take small steps that we can achieve. This way we can keep our promises. And if you keep in your promises, the Torah promise, anything you wish, anything you bless, anything you desire, Abraham, God is going to do. You know why? Because you keep your promises. If you can become your promises, God said, you know what? This is one. Second explanation, a little deeper. Listen to this one. Very unusual. Second explanation is, you see, they have one promise. That before we came out, when the Eliyahu family will have a child very soon, let us say amen. Amen. We're going to hear, Be'ezrat Be Hashem, Be'ezrat Avot. Doctor, I have to tell you that before a baby come to the world, just for you to be prepared, a baby has to make a vow. Every baby included you. We, did, we all did a vow. We all swear on something. The first page of the Tanya, the most famous book of Chabad, bring that famous Gemara. Daniel, Mashbihim, Oto, Tiyeh Tzadik, Ve'al Tiyeh Rasha. You be in swear to be Tzadik and not to become Rasha. And you swear for it. And every year in Yom Kippur, when we come in, in and we realize that we're not really Tzadikim. We have jealousy. We have anger issues. Uh, we're not always honest. We line right and left. I mean, you have one promise that you, you made. So you come to do a tarat and tarim to this promise. To the promise that you're going to become a tzaddik. But you're going to tell me, Rabbi, why do we have to do it every year? Okay, we did it one time. After bar mitzvah, enough. Amen? So why are we doing it? You know why? I will tell you something that you're going to be afraid. After what I'm going to tell you to say it in the Mutzay Yom Kippur. One of the Pesukim that we said in Mutzay Yom Kippur, when we end in Yom Kippur, Hashem O Elohim, Hashem O Elohim. We have another Pesuk, Shema Israel. we have another one. Nishbati Vakayema? Nishmo, Nishmo, Mishpatei Tzitkecha. God, I'm swearing, and I will do, keep all your Torah. Everybody said it in the synagogue and nobody realized. <laughs> you know what we say when we open the Nila a minute before we close? You remember this Pesukim? One of these Pesukim is, once again I swear I will be a tzaddik. And again next year, why you? Kol nedarai, v'yisurai, v'konamai. Bora olam, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I didn't keep. One swear that we have to. Explanation number three. I know I'm giving you today a crash course. But you know, is it going to change your life, you know? I wish that we're going to get to Shacharit at least, but uh, you know, we're going to see. Um, the 
more ever about time. Tell them in another explanation. Another explanation, and the explanation is, you see, I'm a Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva said, Mikhail, Rabbi Akiva said, Mikhail, Rabbi Akiva said, Rabbi Akiva said, no phone, no phone, now he's weird with Hashem. Rabbi Akiva said, Kol ayotze min ayam taur. Any vessel that you make from the water, taur. Why? Because the water is mikveh. Right? If you took the skin of any animals and you did a certain vessel, it's pure. Any animals, kosher, not kosher. You're making a vessel, is taur. And anything that comes from the land, from the ground, is unpure. Except one animal. Which animals? Sea lion. Sea lion. You know what sea lion? It's sea lion. A lion or in the sea. Now, Kelev, we call it Kelev Yam. Kelev Yam, they call it in Hebrew Kelev Yam. I don't know why they don't call it lion, Yariye. But they call it Caleb. In English, they call it a sea lion. Sea lion is the only animals that anything that you do, uh, uh, the only animal that if you make a vessel from these animals, you have to dip it, you have to make it kosher. It's tame. The question is why? If to make from a shark a vessel is okay, sharks, what's the difference between the sharks to sea lion? Why shark is kosher and sea lion is not? Shark is not kosher animals. And still, if you're making something from it, it's kosher. Why? Ladies and gentlemen, listen to, this, listen to the uniqueness. I'm a Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva, the greatest rabbi in the world. Rabbi Akiva is a symbolizer of Teshuvah. Rabbi Akiva came and said, Bore Olam, you know why? Because when a, a, a sea lion ran away, when let's say a shark or a whale chasing a sea lion, where exactly a sea lion ran away to? Mikhail, where? To the ground. Even though the ground is not a comfortable flat place for him, he is really more good than the water. But still, he's running every time that sea lion have issues with anything, he's running to the ground. If the sea lion is running to the water, to the ground when somebody is after him, when you have crisis, meaning is not an animal that belongs to the water. Is an animal that belongs to what? To the ground. If he belongs to the ground, even though 95% of the time he's in the water. And his name is Sea Lion. Sea. Sea is water. Still, he's not kosher. Why? He belongs to the ground. Many of us is coming in and said, Rabbi, we fake in what? Once in a year we're coming in to Yom Kippurim, we become tzaddikim, we pray, all of us get to shuva. And then the whole nine, the whole 99%, we're going back to our habit. Who that we're cheating? Come, Rabbi Akiva, and tell you, when you come into fight to your life, where do you run into? 99% of the Jews run in where? To the synagogue. If you run into the synagogue, you belong to who? You belong to Hashem. Even though that 99% of the time you're walking on the ground. And 1%, only one day in a year, from 365 days, we belong to the synagogues. We belong to Hashem. But you know why we come into this? Because we're fighting for our life. If in time of sorrow, you see, every Jew, every Jew in time of sorrow, you're going to see people, you know what people are doing in an in in airplane? Watching movie back to box. Back to box. The same movie sometimes, three times. But again, a man in the airplane have turbulence? What exactly? They, Rabbi, do you need donation? Any donation? Come on. Any synagogue? Do you have synagogue? No. We're going to build synagogue for you. Oh, just make sure we're going to come. Same thing now. What do you need? Oh, oh. Suddenly, you see the guy reading Tehri, Chumash, Balagan. Chita is doing Rambam. Is, what the Rambam? He doesn't even know what's Chumash. He's already Rambam. He becomes, Rabbi, give me Gemara. Give me Shiu. Why? Because in time of sorrow, sorrow, in time of challenge, a Jew always running where? To the water. Water is Torah. If you're running into the water, you belong to Hashem. Do you know why Kal Nidre is important? You know who made Kal Nidre? 
tradition wise they made it by Khan Nidre, the argument, there are many opinions, one of the most famous opinions, Khan Nidre is by being made and performed by no other from the Moranos. You know who is the Moranos? The Moranos is a Jews in the 1500s when Isabel and her husband in Machshimam and Spain, they killed millions of Jews. And they said, we don't have to kill you. Be Christianity, and we're not going to kill you. But every Sunday you have to go to the Christian place, and you have to bend over, and you have to get married. Into whatever, whatever we tell you, you have to do. You have to prove us. Once in a year, all these people that the whole year was acting like a goyim, goyim completely. We are tzaddikim. We put into filin, we keep goyim completely. They used to go to the basements, and they used to cry by saying, and they are the one that made this tefillah. God, all the vow that I did to idols, all the vow that I did for the discotheque, for Bura Bura, for Cancun, for all this gain, for money, money, money. Yes, I made a lot of vow. I erased all of them. You know why? I belong to you, God. Can need is to remind Hashem. We belong to you. When God is asking each one of us, Ayeka, one question God is asking, where are you? In Yom Kippur, we all come and say, Hineni, here I am. God, I must die, I messed up. I'm Balagan, look at Balagan. But today, when I'm fighting for a life, I know the only direction to run is to you, Hashem. What a message, what a message, huh? Three explanations of Khan Nidre. What a message. If this is so, I'm going to move into Shacharit morning. Shacharit morning, and with this conclude, I wanted to get to Nila, I wanted to get... We didn't start at 8 o'clock, but, you know, let the rabbi in the synagogue do the other jobs, you know. Shacharit <laughs> morning. Shacharit morning in Musaf, they have a special tefillah. Something that, you know, we're doing it, and nobody understands why. Azaa shal Kohen Gadol. What's Azaa? After the Kohen Gadol coming outside with the sacrifice, with everything, he used to take the blood, right, the blood? And what did he used to do with the blood? Mazeh. He used to sprinkle. Achat lemana, vesheva lemata. He used to sp- sprinkle one above the altar and seven times under the altar. And now you're going to remember the speech forever. Because you're going to say it, each one of us. Achat veachat. Achat veshtayim. Achat, one and one. One and two. Now my question to you, what a strange way to count. Usually, Dr. Albert will teach you, will teach you in university, when you redundant yourself seven times, you don't have to repeat. You said one, and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that's it. What do you mean? One and two, one and three, one and... I mean, you repeat yourself seven times. Whatever about I, why? Why do we repeat ourselves seven times? If you know this, this explanation, you might gonna go, you might gonna buy the Ptiha Shal Musaf. For that, going to the Kippurim is important. Nothing more important. We all wait for this. This is the most important. Because this is when the Kohen Gadol opened. All the gates is the one that given us the Baracha. Musaf. So why do we do it? Why do we do it? Yeah? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. If you never did the uh, Kalnidre, go for it. So the message was loud and clear, right? If you didn't do the Kalnidre, go for it. Nothing is more important from Kalnidre. I want you to be here until 120. At least once in a lifetime, a person have to go one. Ballistics. I read the Kotev, she was with Kaspo. I read it. I took, uh, I took, uh, it took me five and a half months to pay for it. No, me, I didn't. I took, thank God, the stop. I, I said, I'm, I'm going all the way. I raise the right, all the money, all the money. I will go to 20,000, no problem. But then it's going to take me, t- tw- it's going to take me 20 months. <laughs> Thank God this time, that must be me. Thank God. <laughs> Listen, I raise the right. I love, I love giving charity anyway. I just need an excuse why to give. And uh, life is good. Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Albert also. We love giving charity. When you love giving charity, it's no problem. Just convince me and don't worry. I mean, I mean, certain people, you have to make negotiations. Certain people just tell them, give, give and God. 
And God opening the door, opening. Mima makim kratiha. From the basement, we're gonna scream, God, you're the one. From that basement, all the blessing is coming. That basement, mima makim, from the bottom. You know why? God love when the Jew is in the bottom. If you're in the bottom, I will make you up. Don't worry. You don't need to be in the floor, in the front. You don't have to be in the second floor. You can be in. An unlimited wealth is going to come to you. The customer is going to knock. God sent me because he was looking for a person that is in the bottom. A humility human being. Why, why, why? The customer is going to look for you guys. And, and, and he's looking. And they will continue to look. Unlimited. Let us say amen. 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 They deserve it so much. But then, you know how much we love you guys. Mikhail is going in. He said, Daniel, don't make balagan. I'm also going to buy. We're not going to be in the same synagogue. I don't want to compete with you. <laughs> Why one and seven? One explanation that I saw is a very beautiful explanation. Yetzer Ra, the even inclination of seven names. Ra, there are many names that Yetzer Chazan give him. Name is your essence. Meaning, Every name is a different tactic that is going against us. You remember when Yaakov Avinu was fighting with the angel? He said, what is your name? That angel was the devil. So what is your name? What's the answer of the, the devil? Why are you ask me what's my name? I don't understand. What kind of stu- I'm some kind of, I say, it's stupid answer. I'm asking you, what is your name? Tell me what's your name. Imagine yourself as a person that's coming to you and said, Roni, what's it? Roni, Roni, right? No, it's true. Okay. One is your name. What's your name? Why are you asking me my name? I'm not FBI. I'm not CIA. What's, what's the problem to answer? My, my name is me. You answer it either way, right? Yaakov is asking the angel after a fight. He almost killed him. Tell me what's He said, no, don't ask me my name. I was said, just explaining. You know why? Because he said, I don't have a name. Every day my name is changed. My name is going, going according to my job. You know, I can be bad. I can be smart, I can be old, I can be king. Every day I have a different name, it depends which way, which path I'm choosing to fight against you. We come in into Beit HaMikdash and we said, God, he has seven tactics and he is the angels. We will never be able to overcome it, Sarah. We know how difficult is that. How can you win against angels? In Yom Kippurim, we come in and say, God, we come to tell you, Achat, Ve'achat. Achat. Achat is Echad Elokeinu. Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. Echad Elokeinu. Bore Olam, you're going to help us with this Yitzhara. And you're going to help us with the second one. And you're going to help us with number three. We need the Echad in each one of them. This is one explanation. Now, if you're coming in to Monday night, the BJCC, the place to be. You're coming here to hear something that is life-changing, especially out of respect to Hanukkah ben Michael, a righteous human being, a man that left this world with the good names. His wife is sedeket completely. Tzipora at Eshet Chayil. Esh, I told you, son, when you got married, do not compare your wife to your mama. It's nothing to compare. The machine that made you Tzipora was broken long time ago. That machine made the perfect, you know, the Eshet Chayil. The name on the machine was Eshet Chayil. <laughs> not Tesla, not Balagan, not... It was the Eshet Chayil brand. That's it. Ah, <laughs> Michael, how can I tell you how it is? It's a decade. What do you think about it? I love each one of you very much. Thank you very much for coming. I know I'm already late, but I'm here. The second explanation with this, I'm going to conclude. Why is it important to buy this aliyah? Because then you remember that God is with you Sunday. And God is with you Monday. <laughs> and God is with you too. This is my explanation. God, I need you every day in the week. Ah, if God with you every... David the Melech said, when I'm close to God, it's all good. It's all good. Yom Kippur is to remind us. Be close to Hashem. Thank you very much.